House Democrats taking the first steps Friday in a bid to stop the president's national emergency declaration to build the border wall. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she'll bring the resolution for a vote Tuesday while also having this to say. Take a listen. The promise was that Mexico was going to pay for it. So it was a, 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 a declaring the president of the United States declaring a national emergency to honor an applause line in a rally. Not only is he disrespecting the Congress, the legislative branch, he is dis and dis the Constitution of the United States, he is dishonoring the office in which he serves. Joining me now with reaction to Speaker Pelosi's comments and the continuing border wall fight, Turning Point USA founder and President Charlie Kirk. Charlie, great to see you. Great to see you, Katie. Thank so Nancy you. Pelosi is now arguing that the president is dishonoring his office by declaring this national emergency. What is your response to that? Well, he's doing the exact opposite. He's fixing a bipartisan failure of the last 40 years where both parties refuse to actually secure the southern border. This is well within his constitutional authority to be able to declare a national emergency where there's where there's an extended need. And look, the, the way I view it is no different than any other national emergency declarations that presidents have done in the past, where there is a pressing need that is affecting the citizens of our country, and he has it within his authority to be able to solve that problem. And the poorest southern border, this is something you I have talked about so much, Katie, is, is having real impact on Americans, whether it be the amount of fentanyl that is coming across the southern border, or guns, or drugs. And, and what's, what's most concerning also is the amount of children that are trafficked across the southern border. We don't talk enough about that. Right. And this is, this, is the, this is his constitutional building authority to secure the southern border. And look, he's also, I, I mean, I'll totally challenge what Speaker Pelosi said. He is the promise keeper in chief. This is something he promised on the campaign trail. He went to Congress and got some startup funding for it, and now is using the 1970s era uh, emergency declaration authority mm -hmm. to be able to secure the southern, southern border once and for all. Charlie, maybe you could help me wrestle with this question, but you know, Democrats and Republicans were for a wall slash offense in 2006 with yeah. the uh, 2006 Fence Act. Chuck Schumer, Dick Durbin, even Barack Obama were on the Senate floor complaining it actually wasn't enough fencing to secure the yeah. southern border. Barack Obama de deployed National Guard troops. President Trump is sending mm -hmm. a thousand more troops next week. What has changed now that the president is taking this uh, situation a step further and taking it a little more seriously, and yet here we are with all of this opposition? Such an insightful question. Two things that I'm able to pinpoint on this. The first of which, President Trump stole the base of the Democrat Party away from them, which is working class voters in the Midwest. So the Democrats have a serious political issue. And the only way they're going to try to make up for it is to try to continue uh, the, the illegal immigration problem, which they turn and they demagogue into a political issue. And they misrepresent it totally and make Republicans seem as if they're anti-immigration. And the second thing is just this hatred for Donald Trump. They simply oppose things just because the president is for them. And, and in short, they, they truly hate President Trump more than they want what's best for America. And it, it seems as if no matter what he poses, no matter what he puts forth, they're immediately and instantaneously and automatically in opposition of it. So those are the two main things. Right. And a real applause for President Trump be able to really change the political makeup of this country and win states that Republicans hadn't won in 20 or 30 years. That's what I attribute the change in the illegal immigration debate uh, towards in, in uh, these yeah. recent couple so, years. Charlie, I want to switch gears a little bit here. You talked about hatred. Uh, you're in charge of Turning Point USA. You have a bunch of chapters all across the country. There was an incident at UC Berkeley. I want to play the video and then get your response. Oh, sh All right, so that was one of your recruiters, Jesus correct, who was uh, allegedly punched in the face by someone who disagrees with him. Can you tell us what happened leading up to that moment? Was there something that prompted this? Was there a confrontation prior to this video that was shot? What was going on here? Yeah, so that we were just made aware of this a couple of days ago where we were doing an activism recruiting event at the University of California, Berkeley with our Turning Point USA chapter, just peacefully trying to recruit students. Uh, and we understand we're going to be in the ideological minority at UC Berkeley, but that doesn't mean you can't try and you can't keep on trying to grow your presence. And uh, one of our activists there was met with physical confrontation, actually sucker punched right in the jaw there. And, um, and this is an unfortunate example of how violent the left has become. And put simply, the left hates the idea that there are other ideas and you know fighting on college campuses we understand we're going to be in the ideological minority but we never thought that we'd be met with physical confrontation and violence it's a sad thing that this happened but uh make, make a little bit news i will be there next week okay. uh, and we'll see what will happen and we, we're going to keep it very peaceful and i hope uh, uc berkeley does as well well be safe and we hope that the police do their job as well charlie kirk thank you so much thank you katie thanks